Um, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for the uh, markets update with regards to the impact of recent events in the Ukraine. Um, this has been presented by Alex Brandreth, the Chief Investment Officer from Luna Investment Management. And I'd just like to say about the financial consequences of the situation are perhaps more visible to us here in the UK. I think it's important to remember the tragic human consequences that's happening in the, in the world um, as we speak. It goes without saying our thoughts are with any of our Ukrainian friends, colleagues, and everyone else who's affected possibly by this conflict. The presentation today, um, Alex will be looking at the impact that the conflict is having on the markets, the lessons and trends that we can learn from previous geopolitical events, how events have affected the capital markets during times of conflict, why um, clients' needs and objectives should not be driven by short-term volatility, and how to mitigate the impact um, of volatility by using a diversified portfolio. Just before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, to mitigate background noises, um, everyone should be on mute, so if you don't mind just checking that. The presentation has been recorded, and we can get this out to anyone who wishes for that. The webinar will last around 15 minutes, just a short one today. And there'll be questions and answers at the end of the presentation, and questions can be asked via the Q&A button, which is at the bottom of the screen. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Alex Brandreth, Chief Investment Officer from Luna. Over to you, Alex. Thanks, Stuart, and, and thank you to Greater for asking me to, to speak today. I, you know, I wish I wasn't doing this presentation. Um, and just like to echo Stuart's comments early and thoughts on you know, our thoughts and, and prayers with everyone that's in, involved in the conflict. There's, there's really no winners from this situation. It's very, very sad. So I'm not an expert on geo on politics, uh, but what I am an expert on is, is market um, investment markets. And uh, that's what I'm going to focus on, on today. Um, so, so just going through the slides, uh, as Stuart said, we'll, we'll go through the impact that this is having on, on different markets. Um, there's always a tendency just to think about the equity market, but there's some big volatility going in um, into commodity markets at the moment. And there's also been a big impact on, on interest rate expectations, inflation, uh, and that has a knock-on impact onto, onto government bonds. We'll touch on how the S&P has performed during different geopolitical events. Um, we, we picked the S&P because it's got the longest track record and we, we can do this analysis, so that, that's the rationale for that. And you know, sadly, we have seen wars in the past uh, and we can get data in terms of how different asset classes perform during that time period, both you know, before and after. As Stuart said, what we're going through at the moment is, is short-term volatility and unrest. Um, and it, importantly, when we go through times like this, and it's not just periods of war, but it's also you know, significant changes that we've gone through over the last few years with, with COVID, for example, um, just highlights the importance of trying to look through the shorter term and, and concentrate on your long-term objectives um, as well. And importantly, um, you know, Luna, other discretionary managers. Um, we're not going to be focusing on what we do today too much, um, but we manage diversified portfolios across different asset classes. So we'll just touch on what we do, but you know, equally that's, that can be said for the market as well. So the first thing you're going to touch on is, is not the equity market, it's actually going to be commodity markets. Um, commodity markets this week are set for their biggest rise on record. Um, and, and this is why uh, on, on the left hand side, you can see the exports from, from Russia and the percentage that that um, it, it has on the, the, from the economy. And then on the right hand side, you can see that the impact that this has had on, on different, uh, well, two oil prices here, both WTI, West Texas and, and Brent. So you can see the impact that this conflict has had on, on the oil market particularly. That being said, um, th this is being felt through through all commodities. Gold has been uh, see, is seen as a safe haven, and investors have flocked to gold during this time. But other commodities like wheat, um, etc., are performing very strongly as well. Now, this slide is also important because it highlights um, you know what what could happen in the future. And at the moment, there's been a lot of words around banning exports or um, Western nations not buying from, from Russia. 
Um, and but this also says, shows the other side. Will, will, will Russia restrict its output and distribution to to Western nations? And if they're thirty seven percent of their exports are from oil, it's very unlikely that they'll stop exporting oil full stop. And on the flip side, from a Western nation's perspective, Russia is the second second biggest producer of oil um, that's exported. So so there's a very limited desire at the moment from Western nations to stop uh, buying oil full stop. What you can see, and we've already had um, natural gas prices at all time highs before this happened, but you can see that the impact that that's, this has on natural gas, and it's not a big proportion of exports from Russia. So that's more likely to see that there could be a ban from, from there. We've already seen that the new uh, pipeline stopped and, and not approved going forward anyway. So there's, there's a potential for the natural gas to be more impacted. And that's why the natural gas prices has been pushing to, to highs. Now, I'm just gonna stop talking about commodities for a little bit and I'm gonna talk about different uh, asset classes. So let's start with the equity market now. It's all really uh, dependent on location. The, the closer you are to the conflict, then the, the bigger the falls that have been. And you don't necessarily have to have be invested in the Russian stock market to, to have seen big falls. There's a couple of Russian listed um, miners, um, which is Evraz and Polymetal, which are listed in the FTSE 100. And both of those two companies have fallen by 90%. So you can see that the impact on these businesses has been pretty significant in a very short period of time. There's a Russian investment trust, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange. That's fallen by staggering 85%. So you can see that the impact on Russian securities has been pretty significant. But the thought, the, the, the important point here is they are two or three holdings within the, the FTSE, FTSE All Share. Uh, we, we at Luna have never bought any of these products. We don't tend to buy regional specific products full stop. And, and equally, Russia is a very small allocation in most global stock markets. So if you think about the MSCI Emerging Markets, which is the core emerging market index, there's only 3% allocated to Russia. So it's very small. It's having a very small impact on global stock markets from that perspective. That being said, there is a tendency um, when events go through this for, for risk aversion and as Stuart touched on, increased volatility. And that's exactly what you've seen. And Europe has been more imp impacted by that, as, a, as I said, because of the location. So European stock markets have fallen, fallen more, um, UK um, being a, a European stock market. Whereas the US, the S&P 500, has been broadly unchanged so far. Um, since since the conflict began a couple of weeks ago. So it really depends on the different types of asset classes. Now, just going back to commodities uh, briefly, and I'm just going to, that's an important point with regards to inflation. We, we were already at eye water in inflation in the UK anyway, in 30 year highs. So it, currently consumer price inflation is at five and a half percent in January. Retail price inflation was just under eight percent. And this is before all of this conflict started. Um, and it was expected that inflation was going to be picking up over the next few months anyway. I don't know if anyone else has been getting emails from British Gas or their uh, gas or electric uh, pr pr provider recently, but, but I did. And it, mine said my prices are going up by 50% in April. And that's going to be impacting CPI from, from then on. So, so the Bank of England had forecast that CPI was going to hit 7% before this had happened it's very possible that inflation could get to eight or even maybe 9%, uh, which, is, which is unheard of over the last 40 odd years. You have to go back to the early 90s, late 80s, since we saw that type of inflation. So that has, a, that has an impact and markets are also, stock markets that is, are, are being a bit more volatile today um, because of that, because that is a tax on consumption. If costs are going up, then that means we have less money in our pockets to go out and spend. And most developed markets are consumption-based economies, so it's not a good um, outcome for, for growth and it's not a good outcome um, for, for, for stock markets. And that's why stock markets have been a little bit weaker more recently. That being said, it's not been a negative for, for every asset class, despite the fact that inflation is expected to be moving higher. The expectation for interest rates, uh, which had been the predominant driver of market performance this year, has actually come down. 
And that's because in, um, central banks are now focusing on the fact that growth will be low in developed markets. Um, the Fed chairman spoke a couple of days ago and said that interest rates won't be going up as fast as people maybe expected a month or so ago. So what you've seen is, is bond prices um, rise, bond yields fall uh, because they have an inverse relationship. So that's actually been a positive from a bond market perspective over, over recent months. Currencies, um, the ruble fell by 30% on Monday relative to the dollar. Um, other currencies have been affected by this. You tend to see safe haven currencies like the dollar and the yen perform slightly better in this environment. So that's what's happening. But we, sadly, we can go back to history and see what's happened in the past um, when we've had different geopolitical events and the impact that they've had on markets. And here, this just touches, as I said, on the S&P 500, the, the one day move when the announcement came through, the drawdown from, from peak to trough, how long that took, and, and most importantly, how long it took to recover. So as you can see in this chart, the, the average uh, fall when an event like this happens is about one and a half percent on the FTSE, I'm sorry, on the S&P 500. And stock markets tend to fall by about 6% from, from peak to trough. That being said, you can see that no um, event is created equal and some have a bigger and less impact on markets. The average day to get to, to a market bottom is about 15 days. Um, and we're currently two weeks into this, so we're, we're bang on average now in terms of that. And you can see that it normally takes just over a month for the stock market to recover from that. I think there's an important point to make here that markets had already been moving anticipation of this in January and February. Um, the the S&P 500 is down 8 or 9% year to date. And that's a function of the fact that um, in January, investors were worried about inflation. They were worried that interest rates were going to be moving up significantly higher. That impact technology and growth orientated companies quite significantly. But also this Russia and Ukraine conflict was rumbling on in the background and clearly has escalated quite significantly in, in February. So markets move in anticipation of events. I think the best way I can highlight this is if you think back only to two years ago, on the 23rd of March, it was actually the stock market low on the FTSE 100. That was also the day that Boris Johnson told us that we were going into a national lockdown for the first time. So the stock market bottomed on the day that you thought the news would be worst. And that's because markets are moving in anticipation events and seeing through this. So despite the fact that this feels very dark at the moment, what, I'm not saying this is the low of stock markets now, but we could be very close to it at some point because markets move anticipation of events and we know the certainty of the event now. Again, we, we can look here at the performance of, again, US asset classes across different time periods. So on the left-hand uh, chart, you've got the different uh, events that have happened. Next to that, you can see how stock markets have performed, large cap S&P 500, how smaller companies perform in this environment, bonds and, and inflation. So I'm just going to pick on just two numbers. The, the average return from investing in markets and in large cap companies is 10%. But interestingly, the, the, the return, annualized return increases in periods of war um, to 11.4%. And equally, volatility falls. The risk of investing actually falls when you go through wartime. So the risk falls from 19% to 128 and again, that's a function of what I said earlier in terms of markets actually move in anticipation and before the event. And then when you're in the event, they tend to rally and perform stronger. Now, at the moment, we're still in the eye of the storm and things could get worse before they get better. And if this escalates, the markets could fall further. But that being said, the longer term picture um, suggests that it, this could be a positive environment for being invested. You can see the impact on different other asset classes and we touched on inflation before you can see that inflation does tend to pick up in this environment because of supply chain issues and because of the conflict that's going on and the impact that it has we've touched already about the importance of longer term investing and, and that's what we concentrate here and that's what you should concentrate on as well in terms of your investment goals and and this is a, you know a very important part chart to, to show this so this is returns, annualized returns from investing in the FTSE all share over the long term. And you can see on the left hand side, if you remain fully invested for the whole time, you generate a return of 7.23% per annum. If you miss out on the best 10 days of stock markets, 
that return falls to 3%. And it's because the compounding impact of those good days has over a long period of time, as well as the fact that you're getting dividends reinvested. But look what happens if you go all the way to the right-hand side. Just 40 days, you miss 40 days um, over this time period, then you actually deliver a, a, a negative return of 3.5%. Now, we are seeing some steep falls in markets at the moment, but we are also seeing some very strong days as well. Thursday last week, we saw a 4% fall in the market, and it was headline news. The following day, stock markets increased by 4%, and nobody talked about it. So there is a tendency to focus in on the bad news and when you're having a bad day in stock markets. What I'd say is those tend to be followed by the good days as well. So despite the fact we're having some large falls at the moment, it's very likely over the coming weeks and months that we'll also see some large increases on daily, um, daily performance as well. And you really don't want to be disinvesting at the moment to miss out on those because it can have a long-term impact on your, your returns. When building portfolios, um, not just at Luna, but across the wealth management industry, it's incredibly important to remain diversified. Um, the old um, saying, don't have all your eggs in one basket, that's incredibly important for managing risk in this environment. And the first way that we do this is by asset allocation. It's having money in bonds, so bonds perform well in this type of environment. It's being invested across different equity markets, you can see there that emerging market equities is a very low allocation for, for, for Luna, um, but equally across the industry. Um, and as I said, Russia within that is an even smaller part of that allocation. But it's having exposure to, to gold miners, which will do well in this environment. Technology and cybersecurity companies have actually done quite well in this environment as well. We also would all, always have some defensive alternative assets uh, within the portfolio to provide that support during times of stress. And that's really been key this year in terms of helping performance as well. And then we touched on cash. Um, if you've tuned in in the past, it's very difficult to justify holding cash when, when it's yielding 0.5% if you're in the UK. And as I said, if inflation gets to 7 or 8%, then in real terms, that's a big impact on your, your long-term um, um, value of your portfolio. So that was all I wanted to go through today. Um, hopefully that gives you a good understanding of one, how markets have been impacted in the short term, but, but two, really it's important to be focusing on longer term um, goals and objectives at this time. Don't get too focused in on what's going on in the short term and the volatility that's going on in the markets and be well diversified in the portfolios that you have. Great, Alex, thank you for that. Um... Very thorough and not too long today, not like the, our usual investment uh, seminars, which are half an hour to 45 minutes. There's just one question we've got here. Um, but feel free if anyone's got any other further questions and answers, just use the Q&A button at the, at the bottom. Um, is it a good time to go into the markets? And if you are already in the markets, what's the best thing that you should be doing? And I suppose that goes back to the slide before about being constantly in the markets and not trying to, it's time in the markets as opposed to timing of the markets. Exactly, it's very difficult to get the exact timing right. And this is a fast moving uh, event and it could go in either direction at this stage. And I don't know which direction it is, it's gonna go. And I think there's very few people that can, can honestly tell you that it is. So, uh, and as I said, markets have already moved significantly in anticipation this. It is always a good opportunity to be buying um, and taking advantage of um, volatility in times like this. We saw it in COVID. As I said, it felt very dark and no one really wanted to buy stock markets in March 2020. No one really wanted to buy stock markets in March 2009 at the height of the financial crisis when we were in recession. But it does tend to be a good time to be to be invested. We, we at Luna have been using this as an opportunity to, to reinvest in cash, take advantage of opportunities that present themselves, whether it be in structured products or investment trusts or good quality companies that have got absolutely no exposure to Russia, but have just fallen because of the sentiment and the impact it's going through. So the, the, there is opportunities, sadly, that are being presented from this. Um, if, if you're already invested, as I said, I, I, I would not be thinking about disinvesting at this time. I think that would, wouldn't be a, a sensible decision and I'd ride through this period of volatility. And like we have done in, over the years as well, we, it's not the first time that we've been through a, you know, a volatile stock, stock market. 
Okay, great, great. Thank you, Alex. There's uh, no further questions that have come in. Um, as mentioned at Pareto, we like to ensure clients' funds are invested in a well-diversified portfolio um, across all asset classes and across all risk profiles with the aim of maximising returns and mitigating volatility. And we do that through our investment managers, such as Lura. I think it's worth remembering that clients are investing for their long-term needs and objectives. And although we should be conscious of some short-term volatility, I don't think this should be at the expense of the client's um, needs, uh, objectives and priorities. So again, I'd like to thank Alex for your time today um, and thank everyone for dialing in. I know time is precious. If there's anything that anyone would like to discuss further, please feel free to speak to myself or your Pareto advisor and we'll assist where possible. It's just worth noting that Pareto's next quarterly investment seminar will be at 10 o'clock on the 12th of April. We hope you can join us and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you very much for your time and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the 12th. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks for listening today. All the best. Take care.